Holy sh It's The Real News, I'm Tharna Noor. After a massive explosion last month that could have harmed hundreds of thousands of people, the largest and oldest oil refinery on the East Coast said it was shutting down for good. But this week, the company that runs the South Philadelphia facility filed for bankruptcy for the second time in a year and a half. On Tuesday, a United States bankruptcy court judge approved a $65 million loan for Philadelphia Energy Solutions. The company now says they plan to rebuild the refinery and keep it in operation. The filing comes after a huge fire at the facility last month. Around four in the morning on June 1st, a fireball erupted in the sky after a butane tank exploded. My windows and everything shook. Carol White is a board member with the Philadelphia environmental justice organization, Philly Thrive. She's lived in the neighborhood across the street from the refinery for 18 years. Wilson Park has um, low income families, mostly uh, single women with children. There was another fire at the refinery earlier in the month too. That very first explosion is the one that got me sick. Um, I was at home, and they said that it was on fire, and the blackest smoke you ever want to see, uh, right in front of my face. Um, I got sick. Um, it was around Mother's Day. I was supposed to have been going away for Mother's Day and couldn't make it. I was in, in my bed for like a week and a half, um, and finally went to the emergency room and found out that I had um, asthma real bad. So they gave me three asthma treatments, antibiotics, and everything like that. The bankruptcy filing this week was frankly pretty confusing. Uh, the day before their bankruptcy hearing, Reuters actually reported that PES had already started shutting down remaining refinery units. That surprised no one after these massive explosions. Here's Sharon Kelly, a Philadelphia-based environmental reporter who we met up with at the refinery. She lives just a mile away from it. The chemical that they use here is called hydrogen fluoride. Uh, that hydrogen fluoride, if, if it's released, um, forms a cloud of gases. Uh, that hugs to the ground, and so and it spreads really rapidly. So you see these rolling clouds uh, in some of the test films that they've done. You see rolling clouds of hydrogen fluoride uh, that um, that move rapidly across uh, flat expanses like uh, like Philadelphia, uh, uh, potentially. Hydrogen fluoride can burn people's skin and can eat through people's internal organs and damage bones. If the explosion had hit this chemical, hundreds of thousands of people could have been harmed. But folks who live near the refinery say even when it's not exploding and catching fire, it's already been doing harm. Here's O, another Philly Thrive member. We have a high level of asthma, we have a high level of cancer, and we also have a high level of um, attention deficit where it's really difficult for the children to study in school. Now, obviously, there are many reasons as to why um, our children are having a hard time studying from violence to um, economic instability, all that but also the chemicals that are coming out of that refinery are harmful. Philadelphia Energy Solutions had just filed for bankruptcy in January 2018, citing the increasing costs of complying with federal pollution standards and the cost of shipping shale oil from West Texas, where the industry was booming. Here's Jim Irby, another Philly Thrive organizer. They have not been uh, particularly sustainable as, as a business, much less as uh, their environmental impact. Uh, they declared bankruptcy in 2018, and that was not the first time that it happened, but they were bailed out by their corporate investors and kept going. But, you know, I mean, what we're seeing is that fossil fuels are not the way of the future. They are not good economically, and they are certainly not good for people. Um, is, is the stakes is high, and the stakes is high not only in our community, but all over the nation, all over the world. Shamar Pitts and his six-month-old daughter, Aya, live a quarter mile from the refinery. And we were in a bed sleep when that, when that uh, explosion occurred. And it's just, it's a shame that it took for the explosion to wake a lot of people up. Because myself, I'm amazed at how I didn't know about the refinery and the ramifications and living near the refinery for so much time. I didn't, I didn't never, I never connected the two. I never connected the oil refinery to climate change. Those on the front lines don't know what Philadelphia Energy Solutions next move will be, but they hope it includes shutting down the refinery for good. We're not gonna be able to sustain the planet and use fossil fuels. It's not gonna work. For The Real News with Willa Reynas, I'm Darna Noor in South Philadelphia.